this project morphed into uh, a public arts master plan um, and, uh, and this playscape, that playground likewise became something other than what, uh, what I think the origins of this project were. So the, the word playscape, after talking about it uh, among the jury and, and, and other people, uh, I think the, the better term is a play sculpture or an interactive sculpture. Children can, in other words, interact with a piece of public art and learn something about art while having, having fun with it. So <clears throat> uh, a few months ago, a uh, request for proposals, which I'm putting in my hand, went out uh, all over the country, and we received 12 uh, submissions for uh, for this children's playscape. The RFP itself uh, contained a number of criteria that had to be followed in, by the artists to create their playscape, uh, and these included the locate the location at Wilmer Park. Uh, consistency with the public arts master plan, um, appropriateness for the site, and other criteria which a member of the jury will, will explain. Uh, we started um, looking at the, the master plan that was created to use that as a guide for how we would evaluate and select um, the final choice. And I, I was just going to just read a couple um, uh, pertinent excerpts from the from the mass plan, one is uh, relates to Wilmer Park and, and how it fits in, um, and that Wilmer Park is the fo is the focus location for introduction of interactive art, which would engage children and I would add adults also on many levels. So that term interactive art, which I think is relates to what Case was saying about playscape and how that playscape terminology is a little misleading. And then under the playscape heading in the master plan. Some um, important pieces to that are playscapes are defined as public art activated by play. And so one of the focuses that we had was looking at this as art first and play second. Um, um, and then uh, the, the playscapes uh, are providing children and adults of all ages a safe and physical experience with art. So those were some of the criteria that, that, we, that we looked at going in. Um, there were uh, 12 submissions, I think, and uh, each submission, uh, we, we, we all got together and, and evaluated the submissions together. We studied them indi individually and then got together and deliberated on them. Um, we used a, approximately eight um, items that, that we evaluated them on. Uh, one was consistency with the master plan, two was aesthetics, three was site appropriateness, Four was functionality, whether this actually works and, and if it meets some of the goals set forth in the master plan. Five was, is it fun and engaging for all ages? Six, feasibility, can this thing be built and, and will it work? Uh, seven, maintenance, uh, and eight, safety. Um, that was the criteria that, that we used and we uh, selected the, um, the piece called Broad Reach. Uh, which was designed by David Hess, um, which case is, is going to hold up. It's essentially a stainless steel sculpture. Um, it's two separate pieces. One piece is um, kind of representing a sail um, or a boat. The other piece representing a wave. Um, and we've also spoken with the artist about it and some ideas. As the jury, we had some ideas about um, how to potentially develop the site around it, the landscape around it a little bit more, to make it a little bit more engaged with the site. Um, and we also discussed an alternative site within Wilmer Park um, that we think has a lot of potential. Um, so, so, so here's Wilmer Park right here. Here's the, the condominiums here, and here's Stepney Station. Um, the original location was just kind of tucked into the into the corner here, inside the asphalt path that goes around um, Wilmer Park. But on the other side of the little entrance road into Wilmer Park, into the parking lot, there's sort of a triangle here of lawn and some mature trees. And that that triangle in there is the alternative location. My name is uh, Charles Lerner. 
and I uh, lived at uh, Stephanie Place, um, and we did submit a letter, um, which was unanimous by uh, all the residents, uh, opposed to the uh, Placecape, or whatever you might call it. Uh, one of the objections we raised was location, and we very much appreciate that you've picked a much better site for, for the park and for, for any type of Placecape or whatever you can. It's, that's, we had suggested that, and we appreciate that being considered. Uh, but the second point, uh, and one of the criteria is appropriateness to the site. Uh, we had hoped that if you had something, it would fit within the environment of the park, uh, with the natural grass, with the, the wood structures that are there. Uh, we had hoped that it would be something like that. Um, although the design you picked was probably the least offensive in a way, the rest were more appropriate for Disneyland. Mm -hmm. with the arch and the butterflies and all sorts of other things. This is probably <clears throat> one of the more artistic ones uh, that were there. Um, so I don't think this fits within the criteria appropriateness to the site of the park. Uh, it would be dramatically different. And it's kind of interesting to me that this is in the historic district. We, we have a <clears throat> manual of 50 to 60 pages for the downtown, which you can do the historic district, and this fits this would, you know, you wouldn't put this downtown. Yeah. The, the other thing I want to talk about is the selection process, which this process of the jury panel was done in secret uh, with little opportunity of an open meeting. I think it should have been an open meeting under the Open Meetings Act. But even if, if you don't think it meets that criteria, I think the town's policy should be, meeting should be open. And maybe you wouldn't do it for uh, the one that was considering the police station because somebody could take advantage of the considerations. Nobody could have taken advantage of the considerations. I think I had asked when the meetings were going to be. Uh, they were secret. I asked what was the final selection. This is the first time I knew what it was. I looked at all 12 of them. I was not permitted to know what the selection was. So I couldn't read the proposals to have a comment uh, on it. So I think if you do these in the future, there are things really that ought to be, ought to be open. The future growth of this community. If you're going to have a vibrant downtown, you need to create things that bring people into that town, and not just tourists, our own community. People who will go on the rails to trails, stop at the park with their children, walk in and get a cup of coffee, visit the, the stores. Also, look at the direct line of it. You walk from one corner in Chestertown past the GAR, the new, um, oh, so, uh, what do we call it? So, no. At any rate, you go past one historic site after another down to this beautiful river. The things that we've been saying are so important as assets of this community are art, history, the environment. This ties it all together in the most beautiful way. So is someone going to have a problem? Are we going to need to raise some money? Are we going to need to approach this? Yeah, we're going to have to do all of those things. But I think we have to look at the weight we put on those things. So, so tonight is really, really cool, people. We just had a fabulous design presented. We've had a great group of people who've worked their tails off evaluating it. So we should be cheering. This is, where is it? That's beautiful. 